with more than 6,000 delegates and nearly half the members of the United States Congress in attendance. The 2009 APAC Policy Conference is an enormous display of American Jewish power. So enormous, it requires the cavernous Washington Convention Center to contain it. This year, nearly all the organizational leaders, politicians, and government officials had one thing on their minds. Iran. 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 Nuclear-armed Iran. A nuclear-armed Iran. A nuclear-armed Iran. Nuclear, nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapons. A nuclear bomb. Military nuclear capability. Nuclear capability. In grave danger. The moment of danger. How big a danger? Irreparable harm. Existential threat. The Holocaust. The Holocaust. The Holocaust. The Holocaust. The Holocaust. Hitler's work. It was Hitler. The gas chamber. Cattle cars. Shivering naked victims. Gassed. The six and a half million souls burned alive. Auschwitz. Treblinka. Buchenwald. The killing camps. The Nazis. Yad Vashem. Never again. Schindler's List. Genocide of Israel. You're doomed. When a man with a gun says he's going to kill you, believe him. The theme of this year's conference was Relationships yep. Matter. And the yeah, hall was festooned show. with billboards picturing Israeli and American leaders embracing or sharing a laugh. But the real display of friendship comes on Monday evening during the conference's emotional high point. Ron Campius for JTA. We're at the Washington Convention Center. It's Monday night, the gala evening for APAC. This is their big, big dinner. You're going to see a little bit about how huge this room is. In previous years, they would go to the uh, RFK Stadium. This year, they, they're here in the uh, Washington Convention Center. What happens is uh, there's a stage over there. Howard Corr, APAC's executive director, gets up there with members of the board, members of the executive like David Victor, the president. They start calling out the names of senators and congressmen here. It's like a blood sport. They call them out one after another. It's very exciting. We reporters are sitting in the desk. We're counting. We stop counting after they get to over halves because that way we can write over half of the House was present here, over half of the Senate, and they always are present. It's, it's very, very impressive. It's just as a show of strength. APAC can get these people to interrupt what they're doing and come here tonight. The conference was also an opportunity for elected officials to show off their Hebrew language skills. I've been to their family uh, centers. Excuse me, Galad Shalat. Me, Kashavanichis. Tohar, Hanish. Am, Yisrael, Hi. Am, Yisrael. Hi. Um, yes, well, hi. But the real business of policy conference happens on Tuesday, when thousands of APAC delegates fan out on Capitol Hill to lobby their congressional representatives. Tuesday at policy conference is the day the rubber meets the road. Tomorrow, Tuesday, we will ask our lawmakers to take action in three ways. One, to prevent a nuclear run. Two, to help the President pursue Mideast peace by reinforcing basic principles that have undergirded successful American diplomacy. And three, to provide the security assistance necessary to ensure Israel can defend her citizens. Of course, not everything said at the conference succeeded in bringing the APAC faithful to their feet. You're not going to like my saying this, but not build more settlements, dismantle existing outposts, and allow the Palestinians freedom of movement based on their first action, access to economic opportunity, and increase security responsibility. This is a show-me deal. Nothing will do more to show Israel's commitment to making peace than freezing new settlement activity. They undercut President Abbas and strengthen Hamas. But the mark of a good relationship is coming together even after some tough words. Reporting from Washington for JTA.org, this is Ben Harris.